Today's video is about another logical fallacy described by Aristotle, which you would think would mean it has a Greek name, but in fact it has a Latin name. I'll come back to the Latin name, however, because it's unusually it actually seems to complicate matters rather than simplify them. So today I'm going to talk about begging the question. In everyday parlance, this phrase has understandably come to mean to raise a question. As in, that roof out there is a mustardy boogie green colour, which begs the question why the hell would somebody paint a roof that colour? Now technically this is an incorrect usage of the phrase, but I don't know, I think it's understandable. It's grammatically, syntactically, and semantically valid to say that begging a question is to raise a question or to ask a question. It makes sense in English. I'll come back to this when we visit the Latin in a moment. Moving away from the vulgar usage for now. Vulgar means common, as well as disgusting, but I'm using it in the common sense this time. The logical fallacy with the name begging the question describes a situation in which somebody is trying to back up a statement they're making with essentially the same statement. So, for instance, you're wrong because you're incorrect. It's true because it's true. But really, these are too simplistic. The really interesting question begging happens because English is so chock full of other language and has so many synonyms. Take this for example. To allow every man an unbounded freedom of speech must always be advantageous to the state, for it is highly conducive to the interests of the community that each individual should enjoy a liberty perfectly unlimited of expressing his sentiments. So that gem of a sentence comes from Richard Watley in his 1826 book, Elements of Logic. In simpler and less sexist language, for everyone to have freedom of speech must be good for the state, since it's good for the interests of the community. Or, to make it even more obvious what Watley's saying, freedom of speech is good for the state because it's good for the community. Given that the community that Watley's talking about is the state, the entire sentence just boils down to the fact that he has an opinion that freedom of speech is good. And then he just says it twice, in two different ways. It's often very difficult to recognise this fallacy in people's speech because it can get buried under layers and layers of language and then the premise and meaning gets lost. And you don't really have time to process all this in your head as they're talking. It is important to try, however, because people use this technique to convince you of stuff they have no evidence for. This is especially true of politics and the media, or politics in the media. Don't think it doesn't happen. Yeah, I don't think anybody thinks politics in the media doesn't happen. Do they? Tell me. Do they? Do they think politics is separate from the media? What I'm talking about is this kind of circular argument that tends to reinforce itself without actually supplying any evidence. So yes, I was going to tell you about the Latin. The name for this logical fallacy in Latin is petitio principi. But the English translation of this doesn't really get you to begging the question, it's more like requesting the premise. Thomas Fowler, no relation to Henry Watson Fowler, author of a dictionary of modern English usage, suggested that it should be petitio quaesiti, but really that's just a more literal translation of begging the question, which was a poor English translation of the Latin to start with. So my advice. Avoid the phrase entirely, in both English and Latin, unless you happen to be a philosopher. While Latin is correct for use in philosophical literature, you can't just walk up to somebody on the street and say, hey, look, you're using this wrong, here's the Latin for it, because it doesn't go together. They don't, it doesn't translate well. The phrase a person on the street was using, unless they have some background in philosophy, probably has little to do with the actual Latin name of this logical fallacy. So in all, I don't really think you can claim that anybody's using it incorrectly if they use it to raise a question. It makes sense to use it in English that way, even if it's not supposed to. Unfortunately, this does mean that the philosophical concept with the same name is going to be misinterpreted sometimes. But that doesn't mean philosophers have to stop using it. They don't have to cater to the lowest common denominator. If philosophers want to keep on using it, just make sure that in Philosophy 101 classes, you explain it. That's all you need to do. Explain what I've tried to explain here in this video today. That it's used technically incorrectly in most common usage, and it's really just referring to a logical fallacy. A logical fallacy where somebody backs up their statement using another statement that's essentially the same, it just sounds different. So yeah, I don't think anybody's really committed any crime to use it in a raise a question manner. It makes sense to use it that way in English, even if it's not supposed to. And yeah, I did just end my sentence in a preposition. Toodles!